If you're listening on podcast, be sure to tune into Wild and Weird West Virginia for additional content on our YouTube channel. Welcome to Wild and Weird Radio, a Wild and Weird West Virginia podcast. Just in time for Halloween, we return to Deep End Antiques in Beckley, West Virginia. This time, we took along the crew, a lot of equipment, and we documented everything that we found for you. We're going to be talking about that and a lot more in this episode. We also have an eyewitness to the events of the UAPs that we captured at Wild and Weird Con. Stay tuned. This is going to be an incredible, spooktacular episode. Welcome back to Wild and Weird Radio, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Remember, if you are a new subscriber over on the YouTube, go ahead and slap that notification bell. Or if you're just seeing us show up in your For You feed and you're, we're just there, go ahead and mash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell because we have a ton of content that is coming out very soon uh, related to some future or, well, past investigations just here in the last week, week and a half. And you want to be kept up to date with those because there is some really special stuff coming with that. Uh, we've had a lot of data peer reviewed and we're doing a proper release on it. So uh, stay tuned, go subscribe, make sure you are subscribed on the podcast. If you're listening audio only and uh, go give us an iTunes rating and review uh, five stars. Those are greatly expensive. Uh, appreciated we we really 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 thank you for those and drop a review uh we want to hear what you think and if you're watching on youtube go ahead and get engaged in the comments below we'd love to hear from you we like engaging with you guys it's fun to talk to everybody and meet the new people and and uh just carry the conversation beyond the show so if you've had a sighting go ahead and head over to wildmeerwv.com you can link it there or you can Throw it in the YouTube comments, Facebook comments, wherever. Mm-hmm. Get after it, guys. So, uh, yeah, we've, we've had a getting, busy, uh, yeah, busy we've couple weeks. A lot of ever since you know the incident at Wild Weird Con, we we have uh, had a lot of people uh, sending us reports. Uh, yeah. We've we've had a lot of new subscribers, as you mentioned. Uh, and yes, definitely the YouTube is growing and that is our goal, uh, to get our YouTube up to par and, uh, hit these levels so that we can give you guys even more awesome stuff, which will be coming. Uh, we just have to get the numbers up and that, that is dependent upon you. So if you are listening, like Joe said, make sure that you do go over to our YouTube. Uh, we will also be only releasing certain videos there exclusively, yeah. Uh, and we had some people who think that this is, you know, we say to subscribe to our channel that we're asking for money. No, we're, we're not asking for money. It's, it's free guys. You, yep. you just, you just hit a subscribe button. It's completely free. And then if you really want to be a super fan, just hit that notify me button there beside it. And that'll let you know when we drop our video live, but that is on uh wild and weird West Virginia. And that is, uh, where you'll find this on YouTube, you know? So, um, yeah, I don't know. We're going to follow up a little bit on some stuff here in, in just a sec. Uh, we just, me and Dave literally just got back from an investigation uh, last night at uh, the Deep End Antiques again. You remember that place? It's a fun place. Yep. Awesome good place. times. Good times at the Deep End. I unfortunately wasn't able to make it out good on that times. trip. Uh, good good got, times. Got two youngins and wasn't able to make it out on this so one. We'll be back up there again shortly. So, uh, you know, well, that's going to happen. Um yep. Before we do that, though, uh, I did have a couple of members, or not members, but listeners, uh, who did ask us, um, you know, to keep doing the news. So let's uh, let's hit a little bit of news and let's make sure that we we uh, hit certain spark parts of the news because some of this is kind of relevant to what we just kind of 
to well, hold on herself. Brandon, right? of course, our field oh, correspondent. Well, of course. Uh, he, he is the official Wild and Weird field correspondent. He shared a article from Curiosmos um, where U.S. pilots are raising concern over increased luminous UFO activity. Now, most of these reports coming in from August uh, of this year and before, and the report has just been I get published, uh, I, I guess you would say. And then the articles are starting to trickle out related to this phenomena where um, pilots, both military and commercial airline pilots, are experiencing these bright lights in the sky. And uh, it is starting to um, starting to become more rampant. The big dipper is where it's hanging out. United uh, 534, we're 30 miles west of Pacific. It's 320, it's 20 degrees north uh, of, of the horizon, and it's probably... Oh, yeah, there it is. It's either the SpaceX satellites, or maybe it's the Perseus, or the Perseus meteor. It's not a satellite, and it's not a meteor. Yeah, these things are not moving like uh, meteors. Uh, it looks like they're uh, orbiting every now and then and changing direction. That would occur. And it's one yeah. of those things where it's kind of debatable where we're experiencing more phenomena or is it just the fact that it's now no longer taboo well from august 6th to september 23rd is what the data window was that they they did on this uh and apparently you know we're talking about lots of objects sighted uh in that period of time and some of which were just moving around at crazy speeds uh, in what they described as a racetrack pattern. Uh, some would say drones, but these things were up there for, you know, literally ever on some of these aca- accounts. Right. So, you know, it, it's insane. They were seen by upwards of 15 different uh, commercial flights, I believe they said. So uh, someone's got these guys watching the skies, right, Jim? I mean, that's what I'm kind of seeing with this. Yep. We've, we've We've got some... Yeah, we've, we've kind of got the civilians and the military guys watching the sky, and uh, we're trying to figure out what is going on up there. And it's very significant to us because um, it kind of matches what you're going to be seeing here in the next uh, next week or so with the full release of the UAP video that we caught. Yeah. Uh, in that data. And um, I don't... I don't even know where to start with that <laughs> other than to say that uh, at first I wasn't really comfortable even showing that data because I really thought we'd be able to just pull apart and debunk it. And instead it's turned out to be something quite the opposite. Yeah. It is a really interesting snippet of uh, a couple of videos that we were able to pull with the thermal. Um, and a- as you've noticed, the more you use it and the more you look up, the more you're you're just seeing these things. And this has been a consistent pattern for yeah. decades. Uh, since thermal and night vision have been a thing, um, if you talk to folks, they would always say, if you look at the sky, you're going to see some really weird stuff. And some of it you can ID, some of it you can debunk, but there's some of it that's just beyond possibilities. Um but the next thing up in our news uh, is the Ogo Pogo. That uh, yeah, floating. Let's, let's talk about the Ogo Pogo thing. Well, you know, I hear all these people saying, like, you know, Photoshop or CGI, and and you're a CGI guy, and I've done enough Photoshop in the past that I can tell you this isn't Photoshop, and you've said it wasn't clearly not CGI. Um, this looks like a plastic head um of some kind of like halloween display or even a mascot head just floating in the water um and uh because all you see is the head and there's nothing else there's no darkness there's no body alluded to it's just this ambiguous two ear looking things poking up out of the water which they are poking out of the water you know, if you zoom in on the photo and you analyze the photo, you can, in fact, see that these two little pointy things are, in fact, coming up out of the water. But that's all they're doing. There's no movement to those ripples. It's just static, like a, a root ball or, or like I said, a, a Halloween decoration that's waterlogged with a couple of little air bubbles in it just bobbing around in the wake. 
Um, I'm going to go, honestly, uh, I don't think this is a physical object, dude. I think it's a physical object, but I don't think it's a physical object that's in that lake. I really do believe that this thing could be photoshopped, and it's a pretty easy little um, uh, exercise. This is a, a really well, good layering exercise. It's simple to do. And when the, I say that, if you the look ripples, at this, you know, go ahead, the ripples. The ripples around the ear, like that's just... Mm -hmm. So here, here's what you're going to do. If you're going to fake this, right, with Photoshop... It's going to take a lot of painting is what it's going to take. Well, it's going to take a lot of painting, but you're also going to add motion to that. You're going to make it look like it's moving through the water, not just bobbing up and down like a bobber. You would, unless that's all you could do with your skill set. I guess, but if that's the best of their skill set and they can make that look identically to photorealism, then I'd say their skill sets should be pretty broad. Mm. Unless that's the only thing they can make look photoreal. You're just assuming also that we're dealing with uh, an actual um, version and not a filter. Um, there's so many filters for Photoshop, dude. I, I don't even have there, all of them, but there's there some wonderful, uh, the ones I have played with do make waves, um, and they do distort things in the water and make it look like it's in water and ice. I mean, there's some incredible stuff, but I don't know. I don't know what this is. It, why I say this is probably, you know, a photo manipulation is because if you really look at that one, it's a very telling part of it. If you look at the wider screen version of this, look down and you're going to see there's a little more underneath the water and it kind of fades out well that's consistent with you painting out the opacity on the bottom layer of whatever this thing would have been more so than it just being oh well, that's like i don't know an animal that's down there because it literally well, it's, just it's not an animal like i'm clearly yeah i'm clearly 100 convinced it is not an animal i no, think it's, it's not it's i think not it's a animal. halloween prop and I what you're talking that. about also looks like shadows and I could go with you, being a Halloween prop as well. Um, the weird part that I find is, uh, you know, it's so close to Halloween. Yeah. So. And I've seen I've seen wolves that collar at Lowe's and Home Depot. It's it's this close to Halloween. Um, did someone take their 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 decoration and chuck it in a lake? You know, to, to get a shot like this, it's a very good possibility. Uh, Dogman is all over the news now. It's yeah. everywhere. It's an, another great. And now the Dogman is getting you in the water. That's what I'm saying. So <laughs> we've got two possibilities, and this is the only way I see it. Either A, it's Photoshopped. Okay. It's not CGI. That's no. not CGI. It's, it's either Photoshopped or it's a physical prop. That's under the water. And if it is even a physical prop, dude, it's Photoshop still because they made this thing blend really well. Um, the only problem I have with it is it's a little bit, the coloration is just a little off from the rest of the surrounding here. If we see over here, I think that's the side of a boat. Uh, the lighting on the boat, the spectrum of the light hitting that white part on the boat or the gray part on the boat does not match those ears. So uh, let's, let's dig in on the next topic. Borg DNA. Oh, the, Borg. <laughs> the, the headline reads, weird Borg DNA may have assimilated microbes for billions of years. Billions. This is from sciencealert.com. Billions of years. Not just millions, billions. Mm -hmm. Billions. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So what they're basically saying is that... Um, I honestly think, man, that this is just another form of evolution. <laughs> I really don't get it because it just sounds like another form of evolution that we're talking about. It's just a genetic evolution. And we're giving it a really cool name, Sapa. There are so many discoveries made every day. To make it cooler. Oh, yeah, you got to. Yeah. Speaking of cells and weird things, the lab-grown brain cells. Did you guys read about this one? I read a little bit about that, but I posted this yeah. one. This was a this was one of my finds. Uh, yeah, go and ahead. it's from a, a website called Nerdist.com. Lab-grown brain brain cells learn to play pong. They may be sentient. Well, I mean, they might be. Yeah. Because if you remember pong, you had to be halfway sentient to play you the game. You did. Pong is like. I mean, my kid plays it, but my kid's also 
sentient. <laughs> but yeah. you've got to have not just uh, thought, but dexterity. Well, we've taught an AI to play it, so we did. There's, there's that. And now you have these lab-grown brain cells. Let's mix lab-grown brain cells and AI and see how bad we can make things. Let's see how conscious they actually are. It's going to be right. pretty, bad. pretty bad eventually, you know. End up something like Flatwoods Monster. Yeah, it, I don't see anything good coming from this. Maybe but, Swamp Thing well. Yeah. yeah. Swamp Thing, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, it why, could be Swamp Thing, right? Why not? Yeah. Why not? I mean, we're now, doing all this other crazy stuff. My personal favorite from the news, uh, simply because I have sat and argued with biologists for literally years. You argue with everybody, though. It's I do argue with a lot of people. Not normal. It's how I communicate. It's not unnormal. <laughs> Yeah. But specifically about large felines in North America being melanistic, a.k.a. the big black cat. Yeah. There was uh, last week, it was October the, uh, I believe, uh, one second, I'll give you the exact date, but it was on uh, the 29th of August, and it was Confirmed and reported on October the 22nd, um, there was a ring doorbell camera that captured a black-coated northern lynx or Canadian lynx. Mm -hmm. Now, for as long as I've been alive, biologists have argued that melanistic uh, cats, big cats in North America, just didn't exist. I don't know if it was in part because of the whole cryptid alignment with the, the Black Panther, um, the alien black cat, not alien like from space, but just out of place black cat mm -hmm. uh, that would be seen in the East quite frequently. Um, or if it was actually them just truly thinking that the biology of these animals could not do uh, with recessive genes what we have seen happen with recessive genes literally for 35 years in the reptile billions of years. No. Well, specifically in the reptile community the reptile for the last community. 35 yeah. years, you know, yeah. the, the yeah. first albino python was in like the, uh, the 1970s. Yeah. And then now like you turn around there, dime a dozen. Yeah, it's true. It's um, very true. All it takes is a small population with a recessive gene and presto, you've now got, these heterozygous animals who are now breeding with one another and you produce a super form, which would be your melanoids. And that was the argument that I have made for as long as I've been, uh, contesting this with, with DNR biology. It just seems logical to me. I mean, Same here. Like it, this isn't a mystery. It's not cryptid. It's not paranormal. It's not spooky. It's not weird. This is it's just, just normal nature. biology. It's nature, you know, Nature finds a way. I've been told. We've got leucistic robins and leucistic owls, leucistic yep. uh, uh, hawks, everything you can imagine we've seen pictures of. But when it comes to the cats, everybody's like, oh, no, who oh, no, knew? Can't no. happen. We can't have a big black cat. No, 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 no. It doesn't happen in the zoos, and it's not going to happen in the wild. Well, guess what? They got it on camera. What I'm now? Sure, I'm sure it's photoshopped. <laughs> You're it's, just, right. it's just Adobe Premiere, and, and it, it is an absolutely paint. beautiful cat. You know, it is it is everything that we have heard yeah. of its uh, the the slick black coated creatures out there in the wild, and uh, it uh, it's gorgeous, absolutely cool. gorgeous. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to, I'd like to have a big puma. That'd be cool. You know, <laughs> right, be really cool. Well, uh, anything else in the news, or is that about it as far well, as... Well, uh, there was uh, the Northrop know. Grumman announcement. Oh, I forgot about that. That's big, too. Yeah. They're finally going to reveal the Raider. That's mm. it, And they're being, like, super slow about it. I mean, they're giving yeah. a hard date for it, but they are they know the hype, and they're just building and playing the hype. They are, and they did the same thing with the B-1, if you remember. Um, they did. We got the F-117 first. But we had to have that because, you know, uh, I think the Gulf War kind of revealed yes, it that. It's like, well, yeah. okay, we have to fess up. Here's yeah. what we got. Yeah, exactly. 
So, uh, so now we're going to get this thing. Um, what's the date? Uh, it's coming December twenty second, I believe. Is that is that what it is? I think so. Yeah. It's very soon. I know. And oh, uh, oh sorry, sorry. That is December second. December second. Yeah. Okay. December second is the date, not the twenty second. It's a little different looking if you've seen some of the concepts images, if that's what it actually looks like. Right. Uh, but it's still kind of the same. I mean, and we're never going to know what it actually does. Let's be real, because you know, all that's classified. Even a Wright Patterson Air Force Base, they they have like one of the stealth bombers, and it's. I mean, you're still not allowed to go look up under yeah. the cockpit like you are other planes within that museum. Yeah. Because even that's even that stuff's still classified. A lot yeah. of. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, what else we got, guys? For the news, that is the last thing I've got. Yeah, right. Yeah. The next thing, well, the the next thing uh, that's news that's related to us is that you guys can catch us at CryptidCon in uh, in November. It's the 18th, the 19th, and 20th. Well, the 19th and 20th. We're going to be there the 18th, uh, loading in and everything. But you will be able to catch us there. It's going to be a blast. CryptidCon's always a blast. They've got a great lineup of speakers going to be there. Um, can't wait to get out there back on the road again doing doing shows that aren't ours <laughs> so uh, it's the 18th is set up right that's what we're saying yeah yeah so we'll be milling around there in the evening after setup you know we will be so if you guys yeah. wanna are you guys us, so if you guys are down. staying at the hotel and you're gonna be there um look us up look for us we yeah. might, might be able to go grab dinner with us or something that'd be fun we'll, we'll let you know where we're at yeah so that's the news i guess right yeah that so is the news. Let's, let's wrap up the news and head over to the deep end for another exciting adventure of tales from the deep end. No. Um, back to the deep end last night, and it was eventful. Um, Travis seems to think it wasn't as eventful, but we, we thought it was eventful, nonetheless. Um... We got there around, um, what time did we get there, Dave? Because you had to have a tuna wrap, as I recall. I think we got there about 7.45, roughly. We were a little bit yeah. late. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. But we were there till like, I don't know, 4.30, something like that. Got home around 5.30. Yeah. We, of course, the first, few, the first few hours, we really didn't miss a whole lot anyway. So it wasn't, you know. We were uh, getting our baseline readings and whatnot, Uh and uh, that's when I decided to just go live with you, for you guys. Uh, that's what you had watched. And um, as we were doing our baseline readings, we were getting some uh, some uh, weird radiation um, hmm. oh, around that. us. Around us. That's how it all began. And uh, so uh, Maria had grabbed the uh, Geiger counter and was trying to figure out where this was coming from, and it. It turns out it's from a, um, it was from a, a compass from a bomber, and um, I have never seen the Geiger counter go that crazy. Over eleven thousand uh, CPMs is what it was. I think he had, I think he probably had about twelve thousand total, didn't it? We had him move it. All it, uh, it. Now it, let's let's explain this real quick because you know we're we're working with CPMs. Yeah. That's the way that we measure uh, with our dosimeter is we measure it in CPMs, and um, at around seventy five to a hundred, you're going to start getting these warnings from from the machine saying, basically, danger, Will Robinson. Yeah, it just gives you a high warning. And, and get out. and a hundred. 150 is is kind of where you you don't want to be around anymore. You want to go ahead and get out of the area because yeah, you you're gonna if you stick around in that long enough, you're gonna have some side effects. Yeah. Um, well, it, it's interesting. When this thing spiked at eleven thousand, almost twelve thousand, that is like Chernobyl level. It's um, it's high. Yeah very high it is very high like radium it is it it from radium paint right it, we're pretty sure it's from radium paint it's either that or there's a liquid inside this thing because it's liquid field 
and we're not sure if that liquid is luminous. If it is, it may have radium in it too. We don't know. Yeah. Uh, we're going to test that next. So we're still trying to figure out a little bit more about the history of this thing. Uh, either that or it was at ground zero during a nuke test. I mean, I don't know, man. This thing is hot. That's all I can tell you. I just wouldn't think that something like that would would be that high unless there was a reason for it. I mean, it, it, oh just, yeah, there's got to be. No, there's a reason, and we tested other uh, radium dials in in the shop, and they they tested out pretty high too, but just not that high. This thing was higher than all of them. Well, you're like you said. The first thing that came to my mind is like, what if this was actually like on an aircraft that was in the immediate area of a detonation. Yeah. Well, you know that they tested, you know, these things and they, they put actual, well, yeah. you know, things out there and they put them, they staged it out. It wasn't like, Oh, we just blew up this boat or this tank. They staged them out so they could tell the, you know, the damage. Well, yep. they may have been way outside the damage zone, but there's still radioactive fallout that's fallen down. So, you know, there's a good chance and it's metal. So it could have absorbed any of that. Either way, yeah. it's given off some radiation. And uh, Travis was very excited about that. He was very happy to know that he had one of the most uh, radioactive pieces uh, in his shop right there in his office where he worked daily. <laughs> yeah. what he not to lick it. Uh, he yeah. it. And for you who don't know, he raises spiders. So there are radioactive, radioactive spiders, spiders right at the, the deep side. end. You just well, can't make this stuff up. Um, I want to go there and get bit. That's what hey, I want to do. I want to yeah. get bit by one of these spiders and then walk up to the walls and just be like, stick. It's probably not going to happen. Stick. I know. But, um, yeah, okay. so we did that and uh, we, we moved the radioactive source out of the way. Uh, after that, we moved on to uh, getting our baselines uh, on our other equipment and whatnot. The, we had the K2, and someone had left a K2, so we used it. Um, and um, we were using two K2s, a Generation 1 and one of the newer ones. And we had a millimeter there, and we had the rim pod there. And we set it over a, uh, what was what was that piece of cloth, Dave? It was, it was, um, a, it was a scarf. scarf. Uh, anything, was it, was it it's civil- an officer's scarf, right? Yeah, I, I can't remember if it was Civil War. I can't remember. But the Civil War. Oh, no, the, uh, the, are you talking about the um, the K2 meter when you started getting those weird readings? Yeah. Well, well, while, while, while Ron was doing baselines, I was in there, and I just happened, I wasn't intentional. I just happened to set the K2 meter up on top yeah. of this scarf because I was trying to uh, fool with my equipment and get, get it ready. And I looked up, and I thought, well, that's kind of strange like because both of the, the bottom two green lights were lit up. And I, I, Maria was in there with me, and I, and I said, uh, "Check this out, Maria." And she got looking at it. We didn't think a whole lot of it, and then we got, and I think Ron finally came back here from his baselines, and he pulled his K two out. Let's just put them both up there. Yeah. We, but we had them both set on top. Well, I thought, well, th- this is a new one. We put a brand new battery in. Maybe it got left behind because there was something wrong with it. You know, that's, that's kind of what I was thinking. Maybe there's something wrong with it. Well, Ron's, t- t- it, it matched my, it matched the other one. I mean, completely matched it. And you know, we even started getting it even started going the yellow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that uh that scarf was actually an uh early Air Force scarf. It had a Hap Arnold on it. Okay. Which is the um the the first uh recognizable Air Force emblem, which was the star with the wings on the side inside the blue circle. And um yeah, that was that was really interesting because you guys were getting some strange readings right there. Oh well, we yeah. did, but we shut power down, and when we shut the power down, if you watched it, it, it actually The reading went dropped. away immediately. It didn't go away. It dropped. So that's the weird part. It should have went away. It should have went completely away. And then, but, but then when power was restored, it never came back to It never came full. back. No. Yeah. It never came back. So I don't know exactly what to call on that one. Um we, you know, he had been told that there's like, um, it could be a ballast, you know, of course it could be, it could be a ballast, but I don't know why it didn't repeat. I really thought it was going to repeat. Um, and we would just be able to say, okay, that's closed. But as of right now, it's still kind of open, but it's not something I want I'm really gonna, I want to say it's definite of anything. I still think there's possibly electrical issue there. I just don't know what caused that electrical issue. Yeah. Now, you guys took the therm too, didn't you? Oh yeah, we took the therm out. 
Um, we got a few interesting results with the therm. One of the most interesting things I think with the therm was when we were conducting a uh, rim pod uh, session with an EVP session, we were actually using an ITC. I'll take that back. It wasn't just EVP. We had uh, EVP and ITC going on because uh, Dave was running. What did you have there? You had the H1? Or I had, one? had H2. And H2, H2, sorry. And then I was also running that. I left this digital recorder in the, in the back room. Right. And I had the RTEVP uh, run through a um, Bluetooth speaker. And so we could hear it. We were doing the uh, you know, the spirit box session thing that it has built into it, which is a little bit more complicated than some of the ones that you may have heard. Um, you can speed up the scan rate like ridiculously fast or slow it down. And you can change the um, frequency to where your, your band you want to go from. So we, uh, we were doing that. And Travis seemed to have... I mean, we all heard it made contact with what sounded like a minor. Yeah. And uh, the questions and answering session was spot on with what you would expect from someone in the mines. Um, and at one point, uh, it said something about money. Uh, the script. Pay. I... And yeah. And he said, well, what kind? And I think it did say script, if I remember yep. correctly. So yep. I said, you got any script around here? And he said, yeah. So he went over and got some script. And um, so, uh, real, real quick, floor. for new listeners, the Deep End Antique Mall has literally everything, literally everything <laughs> that you can imagine is going to be everything. at Travis's shop. So, when Ron says, uh, "Do you have any script here?" That there's a hundred percent chance yeah. that Travis is going to have some script somewhere. Yeah, I could have asked, do you have any any skin from, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, a um a Do you have a, ca- a skinned capuchin here? Well, yeah, yeah he's I, over there on the wall. He's over there, you yeah, know. Yeah, stuffed monkey. Yeah, and that's actually a thing. He's got a stuffed monkey there in the shop. Dude, there's just, I mean, I don't even know. But you'll have to watch the original version uh, where we actually uh, went up there and blew our minds. Took the grand tour. Yeah, it was amazing. But literally, it is a magical place when it comes to that because it seems like anything you ask for, it's there. Uh, so, do you have any script? Yeah. So, we, he we goes and gets like three or four pieces of script. I think it was three. And he puts them on the ground. One, two, three. Right right in, right in front of the, our rim pod. And uh, I'm watching through thermal. And um, there's, um, there's a set point when we say something like, um, well, there's your money. That's what he says when he throws it down. There's your money. And... Um, Go ahead and take it or something. I'd like to see you take it. That's what he says. You'll, you'll be able to hear it all. We're going to we're gonna clean it up and let you guys hear the whole thing. But um, at that point, I looked down with the thermal, and you can see one piece of that script is is hot. The other two are not. They are the same color as the floor. You can almost make them out. That's how cold they are. And uh, that one stays hot. It does not go cold, period. It's It's hot. It's warm. And I can't explain it. The, I mean, it wasn't that warm right there. I know that coins hold body heat. We've proved this, you know, with the thermal. It's a fun little thing to do. Grab something and throw it down and, and watch it. But it'll also turn back to cool and disappear. Yeah, there's a slow fade. You can watch it fade out. Yeah. Well, that didn't happen with, uh, with the script. So um, we conducted that, and we went over a few more, and it kind of seemed like we were making uh, a little bit of contact with some some other beings, people, whatever. Uh, yeah, multiple names that came up. Multiple from- names, yeah. There was uh, several females. I did hear help a few times. Um, there was a couple of guys, you know, that kind of came in and it kind of seemed like they were oppressing the females, to be honest. That's kind of what I got from it. Um, they didn't talk much, but most of the male voices did. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there was an interesting thing. And uh, after that, we decided to go out to the back. That's what things are a little more interesting. And uh, Joe's aware of what I'm talking about when I say out to the back. 
Well, the the back area there is um, really interesting. When we were there last time, we saw th- what we can only describe as like a temporal anomaly. Um, yep. There was this weird shimmering effect, and it hung around. It wasn't an optical illusion, um, but it was only visible out of the periphery of your eye. And mm-hmm. it hung around there for a couple minutes and then faded out. Uh, there was even light that was showing up on one of the brass doorknobs and there were no, uh, no light that should have been cast on that doorknob and nobody was wearing headlamps where we were. We could see it turn. So, and we could see the, yeah, we could see the turn on the knob. Um, it is very, very strange. Uh, we had a lot of weird experiences back there for the brief period that we were there. Yeah. Um, and it, again, you guys can go back to the original deep end episode. We'll, we'll link back to it in the description for this, uh, just for some, you know, foreknowledge, but you'll, uh, you'll, you'll hear all about that. There is just so weird. The back room there, uh, or not the back lot, but the back lot is just so bizarre. Yeah. Well, it's an old series of, of motels, the, the rooms that have just been, you know, abandoned, Used for storage, uh, destroyed. Well, the whole facility used to be an old pool. Yep, that whole area back there at the at the, uh, at the store was the was yeah. the pool. Yeah, and um, it was the uh, what's it called, Dave? The Honey in the Rock, right? That's yep, really Honey in the Rock. Home. Yeah, so a very seedy place. Uh, there was a lot of a lot of bad things that happened there. A lot of and, drugs, uh, prostitution, uh, yes. all that kind of stuff. Yes, absolutely. And um, we got to investigate the brand new uh, storage room that Travis has, which is room 222. And um, it's an interesting room. It's a very interesting room. We went into the room and uh, we were filming, I think we had like three or four cameras. I don't know how many cameras we had. Uh, EVP sessions were conducted. There was uh, thermals run, um, and we did hear at one point audibly what sounded like a female voice. At the same time, of course, you know. So uh, we have not gone back and listened to any of this, just not yet. It's today was rest day. After one yes. of these things, you don't. You just, you know, I've offloaded the the stuff. It's ready. It's queued up. But yeah, there's a lot of listening to do. Uh, we have hours and hours and hours of listening to do. But mm-hmm. that's that's the thing though. Uh, uh, for anybody who who watches the ghost and paranormal TV stuff, you're seeing the highlight reels is what you're watching. Yeah. Um, there's so much stuff where you just have to wade through recordings and and get through it all just to find those those few minutes uh to to put something together you can spend an entire night out uh like like ron and dave did and wind up coming home with five ten minutes of footage maybe yep yep and of that five ten minutes of footage a lot of it's just gonna be you guys walking around talking it's true i mean out of eight hours of footage and you know, I'd say about seven hours, probably something like that, of footage, and that's from multiple cameras. So every one of those cameras was rolling, and we got it from different angles and whatnot. So now, not only do we have to look at video, we have to listen to the audio, the separate audio from each one of those. And I know I have in other times, uh, we've used a spectrum analyzer just to look for for spots to listen to. Well, we're not going to on this one because we actually were running those ITC experiments and um, there's no way to tell. Um, so we'll be actually listening, headphones and all. Of course, make note, though, that the, of course, uh, went back in the, uh, the hotel portion, we did just use an old school EVP session. We did. We did use an old school EVP session. Um I looked around for any thermal, uh, in, you know, signatures and whatnot. There was some sounds. We heard sounds in the left and the right of the room. Uh, there was a bunch of boxes in there. Um, I was thinking, well, maybe we're going to find a mouse or, you know, something like that. Or, I never really saw that. I did see a, a spot on the um, um, the window. There's a, there's a window's boarded up. There's some paneling there or some... Uh, 
what's it called? Particle board. Sorry. And um, as I was looking at the particle board, there's a little spot that that showed up, but I think that was just because that little spot was a little warmer than the rest of the the stuff. You know, it's it wasn't anything significant. It never moved. So. Yeah. And that's the only thermal thing that I even saw in that place. There was nothing at all. Uh, the temperature was, it actually went up after we went in, obviously. There's a uh, small room for people. Small room for people, door closed. Yeah, exactly. So um, there's that. And, uh, and then Dave started uh, having some weird stuff happen to him. Um, he started feeling cold at first. And then uh, he felt very uncomfortable. And uh, was pretty much ready to go. Yeah. So um, why don't you tell a little bit about that, Dave? Yeah, I think that started actually. It was actually Travis was start. He was starting to sweat a little bit, and I was standing in the middle of the room between some of the boxes, and I was actually feeling cold. Now, granted, it was about fifty-seven, fifty-eight degrees in the room, so it's pretty cool. It was. Yeah. Um, but. It was comfort. It was comfortably warm, if that makes sense. Even though it was that cool, but mm-hmm. I'm standing there and I'm I'm feeling just kind of cold around me, um, almost like a breeze. Um, but I said, I said, I said, hey, Ron, come stand right here, see if you feel this too and stuff. And Ron went there and took a few readings, and um, temperature was, you know, what what we expected. And as I'm standing on the other side of the um, other side of the boxes and in, in, in the on the room. That's where I'm standing there, and I start feeling. I was fine for a bit, started getting cold again, and um, it started intensifying. My I, my eyes actually started burning a little bit, and and started watering. For, I mean, just for no apparent reason, um, no allergies, nothing like that, you know. And um, I just started feeling this, uh, you know, fight or flight type thing. You know, I, I was just like, I was just, I'm out of the room. I'm out of the room. Get get out of the room. Um, and it's around that time, actually, we started hearing some that, that female voice a few times, too, if I remember correctly. And that and I believe it was like coming from the back right corner is what we were thinking. Mm-hmm. And uh, but then the entire feeling of the room just changed immediately. There was like this there was this whole uh, feeling all four of us were kind of feeling there was a shift in the room. But but measure there was really no measure of it on our devices where we, where we could see there was a big change. It was more of a, a feeling which obviously can be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you, exactly. you could say one thing or another. Feelings but, are contagious, so you have to uh, definitely be careful with that, right? I mean, that's what you're saying. But the most interesting thing, uh, I've not listened to all EVPs, and I'll just give a little tidbit of information. And the first four minutes of the EVP, uh, my, as we entered the room, we, we get two get outs. <laughs> so... And usually that's, as Ron knows, that's my least favorite thing to hear in, in, on any investigation. Because usually when I hear that, like, okay, I'm ready to move on and set somewhere else. Because I've had two two other bad experiences and in my life that were not uh, pleasant, where I had that exact same feeling. Um, I'm not saying I, we, I know what that what it was we were feeling, but something was not right about the room. That, that was my impression. But um, we all heard the same things in there. And so I would, that that whole area back there is just weird. No area is um, weird. I mean, there's no way around that. It's there's some kind of weird anomalies that take place there. They're repeatable. There's mm-hmm. information that can be gathered, um, and and even even just beyond what's back there, even inside the store, there's weird stuff. You've got uh, doors that will open, and yeah. you've got. Um, uh, oh, the cabinet did open, by the way. I, I'm not shocked. This does not yeah. surprise me why so. But it, we never caught it. Met. We never caught it opening. Mm-mm. Never. Oh, once. really? Nope. I'll give you one better too. I forgot about this because we didn't get it on camera. We tried to get it on camera, mm. and we may have been. I don't remember if we were live when this happened or not, but we were trying. Yeah, we were live. You guys might have got to see that. We were out there at the cabinet, and every time uh, we got a reading on like the K2. I would turn the camera so everybody could see the reading going off and it would stop. It stopped every single time. Take the camera away. It would start up, turn the camera back around. It would stop. Like it was very aware that every, that's it was, funny. It did not want to be seen there. Quantum. So, that was, you know, quantum physics in action. Um, let's, let's talk a little bit about the star of the show at the deep end. 
<laughs> oh, little buddy. Our little buddy, the Obnick. <laughs> yeah, everybody who goes there uh, really as a uh, investigative team, uh, they always try to, uh, I guess, uh, have an experience with the Obnick or whatnot. But, um, and this is one of the things I was telling Travis is like, because he said, well, you didn't really spend a lot of time, you know, researching the Obnick. I'm like, I don't need to research the Obnick. It's, it's there. I don't know what it is, but it's there and it's not anything that harms me or bothers me. Um, so I took it a little bit of salt and, um, we heard it multiple times making that little purry, happy, chirpy sound multiple times. And guys, here's the thing about the opening. I know you're like, oh yeah, you guys are freaking crazy. You're, you're imagining things. Okay. If we're imagining things, then about 50 other people have imagined this. So that means that there's something at the deep end that is intelligent, that is implanting the exact same image into over 50 people's heads. Um, it's probably not radiation. Um, it's probably not, you know, uh, mass psychosis. Uh, at least I'm thinking it's not mass psychosis. We're not mad, I'm pretty sure. But uh, there's something there, and it was felt. Uh, Maria did feel it. It, she said, it felt like uh, she went in there and sat on the couch, and uh, had some alone time with the Obnik. And um, it touched the back of her head, and she, I said, what it feel like? And she said, well, it felt like, you know, like little fingers, just like a, a like a little kid, just kind of patted the back of my head. I'm like, mm, okay, that sounds about right. So did Dave get any alone time with the Ovnik? Dave got his first um, peek at the Ovnik, and it was the same with him, you know, pretty much. So I will let Dave tell you what Dave saw and, and uh, how it went down. It's funny because he asked just Travis, it's like, hey, you want to meet him with the Ovnik? And I was like, well, oh, I guess. And he's like, you guess? <laughs> I was like, okay, okay, yes, I want to see that. I want to see it. Okay. So anyway, so he put me in front of the, I, I got in front of one of the mirrors there uh, near the front room and just watching anyway. So I'm just standing there and uh, of course he goes back in there with Ron in the other room and closes the curtain. So I'm there waiting and see something behind me in the mirror. All that. You know, I, I, I saw a couple of black little shadows and of course while I'm standing there though, I, you know, it, I just started uh, having the hair stand up on my arms and back of my neck and even felt like I just kind of like, I felt tingly all over. I was like, okay, this is Kind of weird. I'm having a reaction, so I don't know. Like I said, like, I don't know if it was like a natural reaction to something or something was happening behind me, but it, it was weird. It was unusual. Um, cause I, yeah. Cause that kind of stuff doesn't scare me. I'm not afraid of it or nervous by it. It's just kind of like, okay. So, um, you know, I, I didn't physically see it. Didn't see the form or anything, but I did see some shadow moving around behind me to the, via the mirror. Um, Which yeah. is how you see it. It yeah. does not really want to be seen as in focused on. Yeah. And that is what I was trying to tell Travis is like, well, we could take everything we've got and we could probably put it back there and we could probably catch the Ovnik. I don't want to. I have no desire to do that because the way I see it, the little guy is shy. OK, um, it's inquisitive, but it's very shy. And to me, it's like, well, it was cool enough that it wanted to come out and check us out and you know, it kind of accepts us. So I'm not going to. Well, I remember uh Travis was surprised when, when I had my sighting of it because I saw it like dead in front of me. With Your reaction eyes. was absolutely priceless though. Like I, I, cause I saw it, saw it. It wasn't like mm -hmm. in the corner of my eye. It wasn't mm -hmm. like it. I focused on it. I could see it clear as day. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. It's and then it was gone. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And when it came out and checked me out there, not the, uh, the doorway where it wouldn't come past the yeah. doorway, but that was something that was cool. And, yeah. It was, uh, it was interesting, man. Yeah. Like, the Ovnik, I can't wait to get back up there, uh, yeah. just to kind of sit in there and hang out. <laughs> yeah. Cause it's just weird. Where else can you go and hang out with an interdimensional creature? Right. You know? So there's that. Um, but yeah, that's why we didn't mess with the Ovnik. It's to, to me, it's, it's like, I respect it too much to start trying to throw tests at it. So, yeah, I mean, we, how, I mean, really honestly, and how do you even test it? And well, why would we? What's the point? You yeah, know, that's we've all had experiences with it. We had, we talked about it on video once. Mm hmm. It's kind of like, I been mean, there, done that. Hey, buddy, how you doing? That's kind of how it is now. Yeah. Like, I don't need to, 
I don't need to validate this for anyone. If you want to go validate it for yourself, go validate it. But treat it with respect. That's all I can say about that. It's like the weird ghost thing, whatever it is that we have here at the house. Like, we're just, we're here with it. We've got an agreement. (laughs) Everything's Mm -hmm. fine. Yeah. Uh, And, and like, it's one of those things where I don't want to test here. I don't. Yeah. I don't yeah. want to do no. anything weird and disturb it or something because, yeah. like I said, it's, it, there has been uh, a few years of peace where we still have weird stuff happening, but like it's not like it was. I mean, there was like big things, like paintings and stuff that were like jumping off the walls and and breaking things. And, yeah, it just wasn't pleasant. Yeah. But yeah. now, now everything's kind of chill. Yeah, man. <laughs> and I think that that's the whole point. It's like. You know, with uh, with that little guy, he's um, you know, it, it's like you said, it's it's like a creature. It's like it's like chasing a cat. You know, when the kids come over and they chase your cat around, like you've yeah. seen that before. The cats don't like that. The cats like to stay out and chill out. Yep. And they might watch the kids, but if the kid starts running toward the cat, it's gonna hide. You know, yep. you're stressing it out. There's no reason for that. That's that's the way I see it. But um, yeah, uh, anybody else goes in, like I said, you know, that's. It's up to you, but we're not going to, we're definitely not going to be investigating Obnick. And that's out of respect, not out of fear. Um, We are, just for everybody's future knowledge, we are planning a workshop. Mm -hmm. We sure are. And we will be taking the full crew uh, as well as everybody who wants to join us. Um, It'll be a smaller group. It it will be, you know, know, RSVP kind of thing. Um, and we're, we're working on a date with that with Travis. So we'll have that to you as soon as possible. But before we wind everything down here, cause you guys had quite the eventful night, but we don't want to give everything away. Cause we have this video coming up. We have the video coming up and I we, do want to touch on one important part of this Okay. We, in the video. You're going to see uh, a bit, you're going to hear a bit about, uh, bias in research. And one of the biases in research is that uh, we were receiving some very interesting question and answers going on. And I did say questions, yes, because we were actually being asked questions at one point um, from an ITC session. And you might want to note too, Ron, because like the, this is not giving anything away really, but like the the activities seem, because it was was somewhat kind of slow. I can see what Travis was getting at, but once we went, once we did at the back of the hotel and came back in, it seemed like things did kind of, pick up a little bit it was getting late at night and the later you go at the deep end the more active it gets as well um there's kind of like uh, from what he told me there's like this magical hour there you know and the later you go at that place the more active it gets it just ramps up and then drops off but um we got some interesting results in the fact that we actually received uh, what sounded like coming over that radio bud um us so we got us on audio is what i'm trying to say and we weren't speaking at the time that was coming through uh the radio frequency so that led to a very interesting question about uh could this be you know us from uh another time or whatever bleeding over and that goes into quantum theory and whatnot and uh yeah it got very very science fiction for a bit well, there well with that weird temporal anomaly that we experienced in Thank the you. back you, you know it just when you told me that that you were starting to hear yeah. what sounded like your all's voices yeah. um i wasn't surprised at all the very first thing i thought was like well no wonder there's that weird rip right there yeah. in there literally is yeah i believe you're right joe i believe that there's actually a rip in space time in and, the place I know and what you that guys, sounds like. It could have it could have been basically broadcasting what you guys were saying later that night. Or thank right you. from that spot. Well there, there's scientists out there that are of course much smarter than the three of us. You know, multiple uh, I don't know about that. No, I mean that's, that's <laughs> pushing it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they could explain the theory to us down to the mathematical equations, but of course that's yeah. beyond probably a little bit little beyond us, I would I would I would think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It'd be nice to be uh, Einstein or Hawking or one of them, but eh. I don't know, man. Uh, I'm good. But um, 
I don't know, guys. I, I'm just going to tell you that the videos that we're going to be putting out from that investigation are going to be very, very interesting. You're definitely going to want to watch them. They will be exclusive on Wild and Weird West Virginia's YouTube channel. You yeah. will have to watch them there. And yes, they will be free. 100% free, guys. So there's no excuse not to not to go over there and subscribe. Um, well, speaking of videos that we're going to be posting. That yeah, go ahead. That's what I was getting ready to go. We, uh, we went back, y'all. Um, yes. So you all heard what happened at Chief Logan. We talked about it on the show. We showed you guys parts of the thermal footage we got. Um, we went back. We, we couldn't resist going back. Uh, th- there was just too much stuff going on. We needed to recreate the video for one um, and get a true size one-to-one comparison with the thermal. Um, we also wanted to try to see if we could find any trace evidence. We came home with a track cast and you'll have to wait to see that. Mm-hmm. But, uh, we did find, uh, evidence of where this thing stood and where it was walking and we and were how able difficult to... it was to get down there. Well, I slid 60 feet on fine. my butt. I missed it on video. You won't get to see it, that. Unfortunately, you Spoiler won't get to see alert. that, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was fun. Um, I mean, the inclines were like 120 to 130 degrees. Mm. Some is a really steep incline. And uh, the spot where I fell and slid was probably closer to like, you know, 100 degrees because it was almost straight down. I just had my heels dug into the dirt and my butt on the ground just bracing for impact because I saw a big tree ahead of me. And uh, oh man, it was fun though. So. Got down to the bottom of the hill, and we uh, we did the one to one recreation, and you're going to hear all about that on the video. But yeah. uh, just wanted to give you guys an update that we did go back out to Logan, and we were able to document more stuff because we weren't restricted with daylight at that point. So the cameras yeah. were were going to be able to see everything that we were trying to do, and uh, we we brought it all back. Yeah, we have it all. Uh, so that'll be getting worked on. I have statements also from the UAP sighting that followed the next day. I want to make sure that we understand that these were two separate events. I know there are people who are wanting to link these together. No one says that they were linked together. We only did that as in uh, to show you, you know, this happened at the event that we had. Um, Two separate days. Yeah, it was two separate days, completely two separate days. Were they related? Who knows? I don't know. Maybe they were, maybe they weren't. But the point is, uh, those were two separate events. There was a actual, um, there was a actual um, big, I'll say it, uh, because I've had, you know, six, seven people now, really good researchers say, yeah, this is possibly a, a Bigfoot. I'm happy saying it now. There's there's a good chance that that was a Bigfoot uh, at this point, as far as I'm concerned. Um, so there was the separate Bigfoot, possible Bigfoot sighting. I'll say possible. The possible Bigfoot sighting. And then the next day, there was the definite <laughs> UAP sightings yeah. witnessed by uh, one, two, three, four, or five, five different people, which was insane. Um, and to boot that... We actually get to hear from one of the witnesses. He's going to come on and we'll be talking to him and that'll be inserted in here as well. Well, guys, we we brought Danner on the show with us. Uh, We were just mentioning how we had had this bizarre encounter with through the thermal at night, looking into the sky and seeing all of this bizarre phenomena taking place over our heads. And we wanted to uh, contact some of the witnesses that were actually there that would, were observing what we all saw. So, uh, Danner, thanks for coming on the show, man. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm always happy to be around. Well, uh, it, we're, we were ec- ecstatic. One, that, you know, this was actually the first event of ours that we've hosted that you've been able to make it to. And what an event <laughs> to <laughs> actually make it to, right? <laughs> um, I know. Of all the ones I end up you know, moseying on down to. It's the one where we pick up all this crazy stuff on thermal. I'm uh, I'm honored. I feel chosen. Right. And you rarely get that lucky from what I understand. It's just a lot of times, you know, and, and the, like you had said, you this stuff never comes to you when you're looking for it. We go out there looking for Bigfoot, 
and we end up picking up UAPs. That's, of course, that's just the irony of the universe. That's how it works. Yeah. It really You're not is. wrong, my friend. It really is, you know, and Ron Moorhead even said, you know, that's exactly when you see things. Yeah. When, when you're not looking for them. And so, I think we kind of proved it. Well, let's not forget to mention that, like, two minutes prior, as we yeah. were walking out of the woods, all Weird of our equipment stuff, starts right? to that's malfunction. True. And we get that Geiger counter spike. <laughs> and so it's almost like they were begging for us to start looking for them as we're shooting this B-roll. Yeah. I just, I'm like, I, I got to see this for myself. I can see it on the phone here, the feed, but I, I need to just see it. And so you hand it to me. And I just remember tracking this thing through the sky as it's making those little J turns. It's making just the strangest, but almost intelligent looking path. And then a second one flies in and they sort of just buzz around each other for a little bit. And it seems like whenever they were done there, they would take off at this speed that was just remarkable into the horizon. And I'm so glad we captured that too, because I feel like if you showed the footage to anyone else, They'd be like, okay, maybe it's a hovering bird or something, but I, I can't explain that speed. It just, it seems like, it looks like it just went from a drone to a jet. It was well, insane. The, the speed was what caught my eye with the first one, because the first mm-hmm. one I saw, I was just looking at the sky, and then all of a sudden, pew, here comes this thing, and I'm like, I'm tracking it. <laughs> yeah, and we, we all thought, assumed, yeah. we're like, oh, it must be just... A really quick satellite or something and then it made that curve and then yeah. immediately we were all hooked I it made that birds. curve and darted into the horizon like I, no tomorrow I thought we and, had birds until i saw that turn and i'm like yeah. what did we just see and it fit the pattern to everything i've heard over the years and you know and it's just like oh my god i think we actually did it i think we caught something here And so immediately, though, we started trying to debunk this, like right out the gate. Mm -hmm. We started trying to debunk it. And uh, Danner was the man behind the camera at this point. um, And he was honing in trying to find insects. So tell us a little bit about what you you saw there when we did find the bugs. Well, because it was so dark, it was obviously hard to rule out like birds or something. So we couldn't say for sure. But the one thing I knew we could rule out is that I know we could find a source of large insects, moths, beetles, whatever. It is getting later in the year, but we could visibly see, you know, an entire array of bugs buzzing around these lamps. So we pointed at as many lamps as we could trying to pick up or replicate the brightness of these objects. And every single time, it was either a fraction as bright or it was flittering in and out as like the shell of the bug would reflect the light. It was very, very evident that it was a very amorphous object that was buzzing around these lights. But whatever was in the sky was a completely solid sphere. That's yeah, no matter how hard we tried, we couldn't reproduce it. Yeah. That's the catch 22 right there is a solid sphere. The only thing that we could actually compare the illumination to was stars. It was like a solid sphere. We could see the stars. You know, they were showing up. They had a signature. But this object was just as bright. But it was Yeah, if not brighter in some cases. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. And uh, it, it was actually just making these movements that was beyond physics. Uh anything that would have been making those kind of movements at the speeds that it was moving. Oh, it just, the G forces that, that would have, this, this object would have succumbed to, it would be unreal. Yeah, it just those, almost like it defied some laws of momentum or something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, those mo- if it was as big as it looked. Right. And you know, that's our thing. We don't really know how big this thing was. Um, I can say this though, yesterday, I mean, for the past, Two days, two evenings now, I've gone out there and I've tried to replicate this. And I've seen the same things. I'm catching the same things on video. And uh, I've, tried, I've caught birds, so I can tell you it's not a bird. Um, I've caught really cool insect footage at this point, too. So we can compare those. I caught a plane. And here's the funny part. The heat exhaust from the plane <laughs> does indeed match... The signature, oh. yeah. Except for the plane is going like this, whereas these things yep. were going, you know, all over the place. 
And if we really look back at some of not even let's not even look at the national reports, look at our reports, look at uh, what Dave saw up near uh, Davis. Yes. And he said that thing was moving in a zigzag pattern. That's why he called me and he was, you know, freaking out. And uh, we've had others who have seen the same thing. They all have this zigzag type pattern that's going on. So the only difference is here, guys, it wasn't visible with the naked eye. I don't know. It's if it was any sort of craft, it was either illegal or right from somewhere else. Yeah, man. I mean, I don't know what to call this thing. Uh, I immediately reached out to uh, to Stan. I sent him the footage over uh, and let him have a look at it. And I was hoping, you know, again, this this was my. I tried two people who I thought would say, "Oh, it's birds." <laughs> don't worry, it's just birds. This happens with thermals. No. I got the, oh, that's definitely not a bird. And uh, that's very interesting. I don't know what it is, but it's very, very interesting. And I think you got something. So, well, Danner, I think you got something is what I'm saying. And let's give credit where credit's due. Danner shot some of the more impressive parts of that video toward the end when there's there's a, like, there's a bunch of them just kind of dancing yeah. around. And, and they seem do look to appear out of nowhere. Yeah, they do. And they seem to be intelligent. I'm agreeing with you, man. And then that's the thing. It's if it were just a standard aircraft, you know, lights or not, let's ignore the lights thing. It just think about how inefficient it is to have that zigzag flight pattern. You know, if you're thinking of any commercial aircraft, they go from point A to point B unless they're looking for something, in which case right. they send a helicopter. Yeah. And we've yep. heard these theories, guys, that, you know, uh, and Avi Loeb is, is saying this, too. Uh, it makes sense. If we were sending, you know, our probes to other planets you know, to think that some maybe have done the same thing here, if if that's what we are seeing, they could be really, really smart AI drones like, you know, and uh, that could explain what they're doing. Maybe they're actually, you know, trying to coordinate with themselves or something. I, I don't know what these flight patterns are all about. And that's a reach. But to me, man, those things look like they know what they're doing and they act like something alive. Yeah, if that, it's not alive, something with a path to follow, like some, like something intentional, whether it's coded yeah. or alive. Yeah, the intentional part, I think, mm -hmm. is the uh, the significant portion of that statement. It was the movements were intentional; they were intelligent and intentional. And the very first one that we captured, if you remember, as soon as we all realized we were watching it, and we were watching something that wasn't a bird it went from doing its erratic movements and weird stuff to just beeline to the horizon as quick as it could. Yeah. And I'm going to say this. Uh, I know a lot of people when they have these experiences, well, you talk about CE fives, right? Where they all kind of think about these things. Uh, it did seem the more we observed that, the more that those things behaved. I don't know. If yeah. That it's was almost like they scattered. Yeah. 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 Right. So I don't know. I was like, man, I wish we had a laser. You know, I was kind of thinking that at the time. And I'm thinking, I don't know, man, maybe there's something to this stuff. I, and, you know, here we are. We had a gyre counter, but we didn't have any EM meters. Although these things were so far up. I don't think we'd have, it would have mattered. Right. I think these things are pretty far up. I don't think. That and we close. didn't have any baseline for that area at that point. So it wouldn't have mattered regardless. We could have had some random we're, discharge. It yeah, would have been nat natural that would have threw yeah. it off. Yeah. We weren't UFO hunting, you know, that's. that's yeah. The thing. yeah. But uh, I got to say it was weird and it was just very strange to me that we went up there looking for one thing and we got sidetracked and almost led or misled as we came out. And Joe just happened to point that thing up to the sky, and there they were. Yeah. And lo and behold. It just amazes me. So, so, uh, so Danner, what's your takeaway after this? Because this, I'm, I'm going to go I, I off. I want to know on, what he thought uh, of first, before this, and then the takeaway. That, yeah, that I'm going to go out on a limb and, and guess that this was the first kind of experience like this that you'd ever had. Yeah, it was definitely my first time with that type of technology in my hands. You know, I've played around with tele telescopes and things, but, uh, and, you know, sensitive technology, but never anything that was beyond the realm of the visible light spectrum. So it was really cool having such a high tech piece of infrared 
that could pick something up at that resolution because I've never seen anything like that. You know, I've taken telescopes and looked at Saturn. Yeah, you know, I look at Jupiter, but you know, you go the other intentional thing. There's so much that's you're missing from the sky when you aim it at one piece. It was nice having such like a wide angle lens view of the sky because we might not like we might not have caught that because right. we just happened to be sweeping the sky with a big enough, uh, I guess, range of vision that the thing just floated into it. And so I was very, very, I guess, grateful that I got to play around with your uh, fancy little toy. And um, <laughs> I got thinking a little bit on the drive home about the Sasquatch footage that you, or whatever that humanoid footage is that you picked We're up on okay the first night. We're okay to call night. it uh, a, at a this possible, point, yeah. possible, yeah. Because that's not just mm-hmm. us at this point. This is like yeah, we've had it peer reviewed now, and it's it's a possible Sasquatch. All right, so I was thinking about the possible Sasquatch, and I I kind of like the idea that the two things are coinciding with one another. It just it feels a little too weird that the power went out right as you're practically about to observe that Sasquatch on the first day, and then we go out to try to replicate the th- same thing in the same place that the Sasquatch was our equipment malfunctions, and then these little things are buzzing around in the sky. And so maybe they're connected, maybe whatever Sasquatch-like creature we saw is a member of whatever race is buzzing around above us. Who knows? Maybe it landed to take a piss. I don't know. But it's wild to think that maybe there's some connection there. It's just, it seemed a little too much of a coincidence and I think you just hit upon the number one problem that a lot of people have with yeah. the so-called woo that you don't hear much about anymore, do you? Because it's kind of uh, this stuff. It just depends on what circles you run in. I think, like if you're if you're going to the, some of the exclusive Bigfoot shows, you're going to hear it a lot. You're going to hear the the slamming of the woo and all that. Like we we generally we obviously we don't do that but no it's derogatory 100 yeah. percent. yeah uh, to people who experience what you just experienced and uh and to claim that you know 100 percent that those two things are not related is just as false as us sitting here saying they're 100 percent related we don't know if they are or aren't but you are seeing a a, a greater interest in the connected phenomena yep because there could be a question yeah and I love the idea of the correlation. I understand, like, you know, people don't like their peas miss with their porridge. But at the same time, I'm having a really hard time ruling that out. Like, if you said to me, like, I know that these two things aren't connected, I'm still not sure I would buy it. I just, it's a little too, same place, same time for me to completely rule that out. That's why we see everything's on the table, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, I I like going with an open mind. Well, man, we appreciate you showing up. Um, it, you're more than welcome to come out to any of our other outings that we do, any workshops oh, going on. Just give oh, us a shout and let us know, man. Workshop, we'll investigation, you. you know. I mean, I, we'll throw you behind some more equipment. Yeah, awesome. we'll put you to work. <laughs> For sure. Oh, I would be more than happy. I know, uh, Ron, you were just telling me about a uh, little ghost hunt you were doing yeah. the other day. and. Yeah. Uh, in the future, like if you've got a date set that's far enough out that I can plan, I would be more than happy to make the drive. Oh, that'd be great, man! Perfect. We we've got love one to we're, we're planning right now. We're hopefully going to have a date uh, after this weekend, or at least a rough date that we can start telling some people to plan for. Yeah, okay. absolutely, man. That'd be absolutely awesome. Danner, why don't you tell us if you have anything going on that these people like where they can see you next and. You know, well, yeah, because Danner is not just a yeah. run-of-the-mill dude. Danner is a phenomenal artist and makes all kinds of cryptid, uh, just everything from it's cryptid everything, e- yes. earrings yeah, to Potter. books to prints books to all to, kinds yeah. of stuff. So yeah. you know, it just uh, tell us a little bit about you and where they can find your stuff. Um, yeah, so I wasn't just wandering by; I was actually vending at the Wild and Weird Con, uh, which was a tremendous event. But I am an illustrator. I mostly work in print, but I work with a lot of jewelry as well because I have access to a laser cutter. I like doing a lot of woodworking. Um, most of my work does focus on cryptozoology and ufology, but blending it with like the great outdoors. So I do this thing called Camp Contradust. And by the way, I am Contradust Designs. Should have said that earlier. But um, 
I take all of my little cryptid characters and I act like they're my troop in a group of Boy Scouts or Scouts in general. And so it's sort of just like an expanded universe of the art that I create and I have a lot of fun with it. And I, it's just, you know, it gets people outside. It gets people looking up. It gets people using their brands. And I think that's what's really important. Well, uh, I, I remember at Wild WildWorkCon, you were telling me, I don't know if you can talk about this or not. We can edit this little snippet out. Yeah. But you were working on a new book. Would you like to share anything about it real quick? Yes, actually, uh, it's funny you brought this up because I think we'll probably be... I know we've announced it already, but I think we're going to make an official announcement announcement with artwork in this coming week. So this will tie up to that nicely. Perfect. But um, those of us who are following me because of Mothman Learns the ABCs, which I illustrated and Michael Strayer of the Moth Boys podcast wrote, uh, we are working on a second book, Mothman Learns the Colors. And so it's eventually going to be a three-part story. But uh, Mothman Learns the Colors, in a similar vein to the ABCs, it's his adventures across West Virginia learning about his surroundings and every page I'm going to throw in some little West Virginia cultural reference that people are going to love. And uh, I'm pretty excited for it. It should be out before the holidays at an exact date. I don't have, but uh, we'll have pre-orders up in December. As soon as it's available, let us know. We'll make sure everybody knows that I got to see one of the panels you were working on and it is, it is amazing guys. That's all I'm going to say about it. Uh, I appreciate that until it comes out. So it is amazing. I, I'm just, just throwing this out here throwing it out there if you haven't got a uh, a panel or anything set for yellow there is a uh wild weird yellow slaw that could be uh, okay used. and it is a west virginia staple my friend okay all so, right i like that just, so we've got so, in addition to each page oh sorry i'll let you finish what you're gonna say so so just you know keep that in mind we got you I think we could throw that in because uh, in addition to like each page, there's like a primary thing where like red, like Mothman rides in a big red fire truck and it's the image. But then we turn the next page. It's like, what else are like, what else is red? What are some other things that you can learn to really like drive that home? And it's Mothman interacting with a handful of other like red objects. But I think that'd be perfect for the what else is yellow page. There you go. There you have it. Make sure to squeeze that in there. <laughs> I'll plant that seed in the next year. That's fantastic. All right, Dan. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming on, man. We've appreciated it. Um, the you, phenomenal guy. You guys need to check him out. Uh, we will insert his socials all right around where he, wherever Ron puts him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm over and, here. Uh, Look at me. That that way you can uh, go ahead and go find Danner and Conjure Just Designs. Give them a like and a follow and share some of the artwork because it's phenomenal. It's great stuff and, uh, you know, just doing really good things, really cool things. I really appreciate that. And if anyone wants to come out and meet me, uh, the next show I have lined up, and I'm taking November off just to catch up with my own work. And uh, my next show after this season is December 4th for Krampus Nacht in ah. Erie, Pennsylvania. So that, it'll be, fun. be a it'll good be time. Festive. It'll be spooky. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. My friend, we thank you so much. And we will have you back on, trust me, one way or the other. Oh, absolutely. Drag me out to any haunted location you want, and I will be there with bells on my shoes. Oh, you got there it. Here we go. You heard it here first, folks. We have a new member of the collective. Welcome aboard. So um, that'll be later this week. Yeah, You'll uh, you'll definitely want to be subscribed to catch that because it is good. We have peer reviewed all the all the data, and uh, it we're we're comfortable presenting it to you guys now. Very comfortable presenting it at this point. I was waiting uh, to hear back from Stan actually before uh, we may. I'll say it, you know, because he thinks it's it's interesting footage. Doesn't say that it's proof of anything, but it's interesting footage, and that's where I'm going to leave it too. It is interesting yeah. footage. I think we caught something and, really good. And we've with with the Bigfoot footage, we've had it reviewed by Cliff Bergman, yeah. uh, Bobo, um, some of the guys from the Olympic Project have seen it at this point. A uh, bunch of other researchers across the country, and they're all like, "Oh yeah, this is good." Yeah, yeah, it's it's something, and. Uh, it's pretty cool uh, to have actually been able to catch that 
and uh, we're going to do it again. I mean, yeah. it may not be Bigfoot, you know, could be aliens next time. I don't know, <laughs> but, but expect it. And what I'm saying by that is uh, subscribe because we're going to put it up there for you when we do yeah. it. And when we do go out, we have increased, we're still increasing our equipment load at this point. Uh, our goal has always been and will always be documentation, complete documentation to where we can rule out things or to where we can just present the data and let you guys make up your own mind. If we have our own opinion on things, that's fine. You can have yours. We don't care. And if, as always, we're never, you, yeah. I say, and as always, we're never claiming to be experts on any of this. Right. No, no, not on this. Absolutely. No, no. There's no but, such. No. So but guys, you, we have, yeah. we've really stepped it up. We've, we've went out, we've got more equipment to continue documenting this stuff. Um, we've got new hardware. You've seen it been put to use and, uh, we wouldn't have any of that hardware if it wasn't for you guys. Yeah. Um, it's because of the support of everybody that comes to the booth and picks something up that we're able to go out here and keep doing this stuff and produce free content for everybody. Yeah. And uh, we're really, 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 really close to being able to go live on YouTube, by the way. So tell your Very friends, um, all you folks who are listening uh, right now, just tell your friends, share it with one of your friends. Just tell them, even if, even if they don't watch, if they have a YouTube account, just tell them to go subscribe to wild and weird West Virginia, because it's, we just we have to hit that number at this point. We've got the other criteria checked. We're so close now. We just have to hit a thousand people, and we're able to go live and produce live content for everybody. Yeah, we are so close at this point. Once we do that, anyone who knows us knows that there's going to be some serious purpose yeah. to this. We'll be able to actually share data. We'll actually be able to to have some fun. Well, I mean, I know we're going to be doing giveaways. That's a, a given. Oh yeah, that's a no brainer. We do so. that anyway. Exactly. So now we're just going to be able to reach an even bigger, more real time audience when we're doing yep. those. So you'll Talk be able to, to ask guys questions. In real time, communicate, answer your questions yep. in real time, all that stuff. Yes, absolutely. So do make sure that you are, uh, you do hit that notification button so you can stay up to date with everything we're saying. And I hope I didn't step on your closing toes there, Joe. I didn't mean to. Oh, no, you didn't step on the closing toes, man, because we got the closing, closing to do. <laughs> it's time. All right. To go over who we got. Because <laughs> we didn't do it last week. I just told you outright who won. And yeah, I know. of course, I no know. one was shocked. Okay. For the last month and one, one or five weeks, yeah. the men in black had been up our butt, downloading everything. Uh, so Washington, D.C. had reigned supreme. But our boys, Pittsburgh, PA, came in from behind. Wow. And and took out the men in black this week. Really? Uh, well, okay. I can't say they took them out because it is a okay. dead one to one tie. <laughs> okay. But, but, uh, it on our tally, it shows Pittsburgh, PA above Washington because of um, uh, letter uh, alphabetized. I got you. <laughs> so, so we're giving it to Pittsburgh this week. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. but man, they're, they're trying there. It's literally, it's, it's the exact same amount of downloads in each city. Uh, it's crazy, but Seattle, you guys are back up on the board. Seattle climbed up. Uh, you guys were down in like sixth and eighth place. You used to reign Supreme Seattle, but, uh, you did creep back into number three position. So all I'm, I'm begging you, Seattle next week. Beat DC. Well, we've got the Bigfoot people out there, Joe. So we do. We got the chance. Bigfoot people out there. Washington, wake up, because you know, it, spread the word. Let, let's get it out there. I mean, guys, we're the Washington of the East Coast, y'all. At this, like point, it's we're the Pacific Northwest. West Virginia is of the East Coast. I, I you guys get be. with us, you Bigfooters out there in Washington. Go check out the stuff. Go listen to the uh, the Bigfoot episodes. All that. Soak them up. Um, now uh, we finally, hey, West Virginia is actually at number five on uh, on the list. Well, welcome we've back got, home. We've got Morgantown. It's the first time West Virginia has actually been on the list in many a moons. Yeah, oh, wow. Um, so we got a Morgantown there at number five. So they actually, we, there was quite a bit of downloads coming out of Morgantown that 
uh, this past week. That was great. Thank you guys up there and uh, listening to us. I'm going to give you guys now the international rundown before we close out. Uh, the United States, obviously, they're the the number one downloading uh, source here. Then followed by the United Kingdom and Canada. But uh, remember how I've been telling you guys that Germany was a sleeper? Germany, we appreciate y'all. You bumped Australia. Oh, really? Yep, you bumped Australia from number four. Uh, it's the first week that we've actually had movement on the international polls in quite some time, um, like in the top five. Now, uh, the the bottom, you know, five through ten, um, we 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 still, man, I'm, I'm I'm concerned about our folks in Zimbabwe. We ain't seen from them for a while. Yeah, Zimbabwe just dropped but, off the map. They were there they and did. gone. <laughs> and uh, but weird. Denmark, Denmark's popped up on there. Turkey, we got some folks over in Turkey, Turkey. who are listening to Turkey's us now. Good, yeah. And uh, and that's that's great. We appreciate every one of our international listeners. Norway, my people, my people. It's cold up there. My Scandinavian bloodline. Yeah, Love y'all. Glad to have you guys listening to us. You guys are great. And uh, that's gonna do it. So next week, I want I want. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna pick somebody out. I'm gonna throw somebody out here. Seattle Zeta Washington. reticulans. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. <laughs> Wrong. Seattle, Washington. I'm dropping the challenge right now. You guys, uh, take number one. If you if you guys take yeah. number one, we will. Uh, what are we gonna take... do? What, what are we gonna do for them? Let's do something for them. Yeah, yeah. If they if they hit it, if Washington gets it, Seattle, Washington has to get it though. If Seattle, Washington gets it, yeah, because you guys are the one on the poll. Uh, if you guys share it around with your friends and you get people to download and listen, this is just on the audio side, okay? So they can listen when they're driving, they can listen at work, however they want to do it. If you guys can hit the polling position once again, we will uh, will basically pull a lottery. We'll have all you guys well, who I'll are get in you Seattle. better than that, buddy. I'll get you one better than that. I can see him over here on YouTube, too. So I can oh, see where you're right. coming from too. So if that's I see right. a, a tick up in on our YouTube of these Washington friends and family, yeah. So yes. you guys, you guys from Seattle, Washington, reach out to us, and we will put a little lottery together, and we will send you out uh, one of these. I love it. That's absolutely what there's, we're gonna do. There's only two of these, and it these they glow in the dark. Um, they're a special blue color that we made, and they're they're refrigerator magnets. So this is a uh, midnight blue Mothman. It's showing up like super blue here on the camera, yeah, but it's it a little dark. Yeah. Um, but we'll send you guys one of those. Uh, we'll, we'll do a lottery on whoever from Seattle. Re- retail value on that is about uh, fifteen nine nine, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, for yeah, one of those. Yeah. Yep. So, so yes, the challenge is thrown. Seattle, don't fail us. Get wrong. in there, guys. Share it with your friends. It could make Ron lick the compass as well. I'm not going to lick the compass. We've been <laughs> we could hear Ron no, lick the compass. It's not going to happen. You tried do, yes. No, they they tried oh, to God. make me lick a radioactive compass. No. You know, I was I was shocked that nobody actually threw a dollar on the table to the PayPal. Because <laughs> I it in there. I was terrified they would. <laughs> well, everybody, thanks for listening. Uh, and as always, remember... When you're out in the woods and you don't have a thermal, there's probably something staring back at you and you just don't know it. Stay wild and rude, everybody.